Hey YouTube, Jim here. Welcome to Top 10 Archive. There's something fascinating about criminal confessions that gives most of us the chills. What goes on in the heads of killers? As some seem very remorseful of their actions, it makes you wonder if there are truly good people under that thick layer of hate. Join us as we dive deeper into the minds of killers with this installment of the Top 10 Scary Confessions Caught on Tape. But before we get started, why not send us a lifeline by hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on future uploads. If you wound up enjoying this video, let us know by giving it a thumbs up and let us know in the comments section if you've ever had to call emergency services. Number 10. Jared Murray Police found a young Oklahoma man's body in a ditch with bullet wounds as the apparent cause of death. The victim. Gennaro Sanchez would have been left with no justice if the murderers didn't have gigantic egos. Jared Murray, a 21-year-old Oklahoma student and former classmate of Sanchez, fessed right up to the crime. He asked his friend Gennaro to drive him to Walmart, then pulled out a gun, directed him to drive to another town, and began messing around with the weapon. Gennaro, uneasy, played along, even receiving the weapon from Murray when he handed it to him. He didn't expect Jared to have a second weapon, and definitely didn't expect he'd shoot him. When he confesses, it's as if he's explaining how he changed his tire, totally clinical and calm. Uh, in summation that I'm guilty, yes. Of what? Of murder. I shot him in the head twice. He had just wanted to know what it was like to kill someone, and poor Gennaro Sanchez had been at the wrong place at the wrong time. Number 9. John Paul Seleski Another random act of violence, this killer shot a random jogger on the street in Arkansas. During the police interview, Seleski goes through a variety of conflicting emotions as he says, I shot him in the back, and then he turned around and I shot him again and again. He looks angry, then regretful, and even disillusioned with the world. He apparently thought he'd do a good deed by taking another person out of this cruel, cruel world. He also says that these joggers are essentially just lazy people, and if they're not jogging, they're at home eating and sleeping. Number 8. Daniel Wozniak In a moment of complete and utter lack of sense, genius criminal Daniel Wozniak killed his friend Sam by shooting him, planning to then take his ATM card and drain his accounts. For what? to pay for his wedding, which he found himself unable to finance. To cover up his own crime, he decided to stage the murder of Sam's girlfriend as if Sam himself had done it. First, he asked Sam's girlfriend to come to Sam's house pretending to be him. According to Sam, he lured her into his apartment, then shot her twice in the head and ran, hoping authorities would assume Sam killed his girlfriend. Surely, it's usually the boyfriend that did it when it comes to murders of women, but when it comes to really, really dumb crimes, Daniel Wozniak is your guy. The scariest part is how he confesses that his motive was about money, all while laughing. And your motive behind uh, uh, killing Sam was? Money. Okay. <laughs> Number seven, Christian Romero. What's scarier than a confession to murder? One done in an adorable prepubescent voice. Little Christian Romero talks about killing his father, stating that he'd shot him several times. His words were, And after I shot him the one time, he was still moving. So I, I think I shot him again. He was accused of killing both his father and their tenant in their apartment in Arizona. The entire creepy confession is given in a voice that could just as easily tell you about his day at elementary school. The boy did time in a group home, a foster home, and turned 18 recently, which means he's off probation, but will continue treatment until he's 21. Number 6. Jennifer Pan Another young killer, Jennifer Pan confessed on tape after hours and hours of police probing. The crime? hiring hitmen to stage a breaking and entering and killing her parents, leaving her unscathed. Now, after making a murderer and a variety of other wrongful convictions made after false confessions, this could be problematic. 
However, Jennifer Pan was in a strange position to begin with, supposedly the survivor of a break-in turned multiple murder. Her father also survived, and his story didn't match hers at all. The 24-year-old weeps during the police interview and after hours of interrogation, she lets out the first terrifying clue of her guilt. What happens to me? Given that little bit, the officer in the questioning room turns to sweetness, becoming the good cop again, asking her to be strong. They came, you paid, and they did what they were supposed to do. In the end, she talks about how long it took her to be sure she wanted a hitman to kill her parents and what she told the hitman. Number five, Jeremy Cancel. Here's another frightening confession, mostly because of the motive and the delivery of the facts. Before, we saw Daniel Wozniak commit two murders for money. Now we see Jeremy Cancel admit to the violent asphyxiation of another person because he was bored. In fact, he looks bored during the interview, reclined against the wall with a blank look on his face. He admits that he put a plastic bag inside his victim's mouth, a classmate at his university, in his dorm room, and then put a pillow over his face to strangle him. Could this have been the look of this killer as he committed this crime? What could make you feel more helpless than hearing your killer yawn? as he watched the life drift out of you. Number four, Checkington Sinclair. 911 calls have to be the most engaging audio. You watch as someone, a victim, a perpetrator, even a spectator, telling an operator about gruesome and sometimes ridiculous events. I mean, we all know the lady who called 911 over the little girl selling water. This 911 tape shows as Checkington Sinclair calmly calls in the murder of his wife in a passive voice, saying, Who did you murder? I murdered my wife. See, if you're going to murder your wife, which I don't recommend, maybe don't confess on a 911 call. It seems like Sinclair and his wife got into an altercation, which resulted in him losing his temper and taking her life. Number three. Israel Keys. You know you have a demented serial killer in your precinct when he calmly boasts about the method and details of his murders while having a coffee and a bagel. That's Israel Keys for you. He not only randomly killed and raped approximately eight people, but he also funded his serial killing lifestyle by robbing banks in several states. Police describe him as meticulous and organized leaving kill kits in waterproof containers so he could kill at a moment's notice with everything he needs. In his police interview, he goes back and forth from talking about his crimes in detail to saying, there's no witnesses. There's also no witnesses, really. There's no deals around. The most tragic question remains, will I ever eat a bagel without thinking of murder again? Hmm? Stay tuned. Number two. Cho Sung Hui. One of the most notorious scary confessions is that of Cho Sung Hui, the mass shooter at Virginia Tech. Long before killing 32 people at his school, he was a young Korean immigrant who grew up with anxiety and depression. He was constantly bullied and looked at as being different, strange, and even violent. He'd submit works like scripts for plays that involved violence and seemed to often feel rejected. His confession was given to NBC News, which they played live, and involved saying things like, This is where it all ends. But also much angrier messages, saying he had done the murders to prevent them from doing the same things to others, which was later assumed to be stopping bullies from continuing to make people feel bad. It's quite sad, and definitely scary, especially when you imagine being on the wrong end of a weapon held by Cho Sung Hui. Number one, undercover confession. What if you accidentally let it slip that you committed 43 extra crimes than the authorities were aware of? This scary confession is interesting because you feel like you're in a jail cell catching the scoop of what some guy did on the outside.
This super scary, villain-looking murderer thought he was safe from snitches inside his cell. But sadly for him, after refusing to confess to his crimes, police had placed a mole as his cellmate. Of course, killers will be killers, and his ego gets the best of him. He starts bragging about how many women he had killed and how little the police knew. This mid-snack, super-casual confession got him years added to his sentence and probably a distrust for friends inside the prison, where he'll be for the rest of his life. Thanks for watching. I confess those were really scary confessions. I also confess that I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the channel right now, click the receive notifications bell, confess to your enjoyment of this video by giving it a like, and then sharing it with all of your friends and family.